20 seconds. Nine, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time to fish. Lake Dardanelle was where the Elite 50 started. And the world's best bass anglers made the 2004 E50 tournament in Russellville one to remember. Big and oh, it's a big bass. Stay hooked up, baby. Stay hooked up. Look up there. Look up. Look up there. Whoa! Come here. Whoa! Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. Whoa! 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 Godzilla ain't got nothing on me right now. Whoa! There he is. I'm going here, baby. Woo! Oh, yeah. One night, boy. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Randy Howard! Now they're back for E50 number two of 2005. Conditions are tough, but don't worry. They're catching them. After two days, the field is down to the top 12. A superstar lineup, including five former Sitco Bassmaster Classic winners and Anglers of the Year. Davey Hyde. I'm going to really try to focus and uh, be able to make sure I'm there uh, on Saturday. Last event, I made the cut and had to go home after Friday. I don't want that to happen. Gary Klein. Well, you know, anytime you're fishing against a field of 50 of the greatest anglers in the country and make the cut and get to play for the big money, you get excited. Ah! And these guys are all very talented, and we'll probably see a lot of neat tech meets out there today. And But that's always a great thing about fishing this lake, and it's what I enjoyed about fishing it last year, multiple patterns. I mean, it, it just wasn't any one thing. I mean, and look at these guys here. Guys made the cut throwing pop water. Guys made the cut throwing frog. Guys made the cut throwing Carolina rig. Guys made the cut cranking. I made the cut throwing a big 10-inch worm. I mean, gosh, there's just so many different ways to catch these fish, and that's exciting. And the leader after two days, Mike Iaconelli. Every piece of wood you get to. Oh. Uh. 12 anglers fishing the six-hole course, also known as Illinois Bayou. Now they're on the clock. The strategies have changed. But the goal is clear. Be in the top six today or hit the road. Now is the oh, moment duh, of truth. Got it. Ugh. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Lake Dardanelle on the Arkansas River, the second stop on the Elite 50 Tour. The top 50 anglers from the Sitco Bassmaster Tour competing in this four event series. So far, the undisputed king of the Elite 50s has been this man, Mark Davis of Arkansas. Five E50s are complete. He's won three of them. Took home the first place event at our last one, Smith Lake in Alabama. He'll be joining us today in the studios. For day three, we move to our course, and what a top 12 we have this week. A total of eight Bassmaster Classics have been won by our anglers making the cut. Led by the loudest man on the tour, the strongest voice in terms of volume, Mike Iaconelli. God, it's a good one. Mike is making his second Elite 50 top 12 in a row. He finished in ninth place last event at Smith Lake. And this week, he is feeling it on Lake Dardanelle. Five minutes after we got here, man, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Iconelli would lead both of the qualifying days. Like everyone else in this tournament, he's getting the job done in a variety of ways. I caught him on a jig, I caught him on a worm, I caught him on a spinnerbait, I caught him on a crankbait. I mean, the list was endless. And, and a lot of times in a post spawn situation, you got to throw a lot of different baits. And now check out who's in second place. Behind Iaconelli, 28-10. Yes, it is Kevin Van Dam. So Kevin Van Dam, there have been six elite 50s. Kevin Van Dam has made the cut to the final day, the semifinal round, six out of six times. How can a guy who swings for the fences like that be so consistent? Well, that's what makes him so great. So now we have our top 12 for the final two days of fishing. Take a look at it. 
star-studded, but that's what you expect with these Elite 50 events. We got five classic winners in that top 12. Multiple anglers of the year. We got Aaron Martins, Davey High, Rick Clun, and of course, leading the way, Mike Iaconelli and Kevin Van Dam. I'm Tommy Sanders. Here is our course for the final two days of fishing. Six holes in the Illinois Bayou Tributary of the Arkansas River and Lake Dardanelle. The anglers are going to fish about an hour and 20 minutes in each one of those holes. They'll have a happy hour where they can fish any hole at the end of the day. And of course, there are the holes right there. One through five going up the bayou. And number six, interestingly, right there where the takeoff and the weigh-in is. A lot of fan participation in that one right there. It's going to be fun, but we can't start an E50 event without talking to Mr. E50 himself. And Jerry McKinnis has got him over there. <laughs> Mr. E50 himself. You're liking that, aren't you, Mark? Sounds good. It's got a nice <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> well, you are the man. It, it, it's unbelievable. What you have done, if you had done it in any other sport, Mark Davis would be the only thing anyone, anybody could talk about. Well, it's been a great ride, I'll tell you that. Let's just, let's just say someone else did this. If, if Denny Brower or Larry Nixon or someone won half of the E-50s, your, your jaw would be hanging out. You, you just couldn't believe it. How would you describe what had just happened to them? Phenomenal. That's, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> you know, I don't toot my own horn very much, but it's uh, it's hard for me to believe I've actually pulled this off. And it is phenomenal, and uh, I've changed the way I fish. You have changed the way you fish. That's... My approach is different, yes. Since you won, or as you were winning? As I was winning, you know, I went like eight years without a win after I won the Classic, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I decided, you know, enough's enough. It's time to start winning. And I changed. And, I, and you know, they say you can't teach an old dog a new trick. Maybe you can. Well, I tell you what, the good news is Mark's going to hang around here with us a little bit. We're going we're gonna to find out more about how he changed. There he's got. Yeah. Whoa. you got to be versatile this week on Lake Dardanelle. Which technique will prevail? Who can scream the loudest? We're about to find out. We done found us a dog little hunt. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail, brought to you by Sitco. And Mercury Marine. Lawrence. And Cialis. The Elite 50, the top 50 anglers from the Sitgo Bassmaster Tour. This is E50 event number two. We're on Lake Dardanelle on the Arkansas River in Arkansas. 12 anglers left on the semifinal day. A lot of superstars. We're going to have two anglers in each one of our six holes as they fish through the six-hole course today. And at the end, they'll have a happy hour. They can fish any hole they want to then. And Kevin Van Dam and Mike Iaconelli had first and second choice. And wouldn't you know it, they both picked the same hole Number six, which was the hole that Randy, Randy Howe basically won the tournament in last year, and here they are, head to head, right off the bat. I feel like it's important to come out of here with a couple fish. You know, I don't, I don't think you necessarily have to catch a limit here, but leaving this hole with one or two in my live well is going to be real important for me. I want to try to focus on what I'm doing. Um, you know, there's a good possibility that I'll, Kevin will catch one while we're here. I'm going to try to block that out. I'm going to try to focus on every cast. Even if he catches a seven or eight pounder and starts yelling, I got to focus on my pattern. So um, it's pretty exciting, though. Pretty exciting to be sharing it with, with uh, probably the best fisherman in the world. So best fisherman in the world, and man, maybe number one and number two right off the bat, head to head, in the same hole. Iconelli scores first, much to the delight of the folks up there on the dike. But it is going to be unusual to see anglers this close to each other. These holes are are so big. They have so many different places to fish that they'll be they'll be spread out and you won't even see the other angler. Ike wins the first face off. Now over to the legend Rick Clun. He's gonna start his day in hole three and he likes this format. Uh, it's my favorite format of all. You know, whether I do well or not, this is where I can do the best because my ability is locating fish. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm never gonna say I catch fish. Once you put people on fish, a lot of guys can catch them as good as me, but there's not a whole lot of them that can find them as fast as I can. And, and this format really makes you do that. Every hole, you got to go in, read the hole, and then and try to figure out what the fish are doing. And eight times out of 10 in this format, I'm going to do well. And it appears, Tommy, that uh, 
Rick is doing a lot of lure chains right here. I think right off the bat, the guys are going to switch back and forth from a crankbait to a small finesse worm. Those will be the probably the two magic lures. Rick is the greatest, possibly, at finding fish. Boy, once he gets zeroed in on them on the lure, and he loves throwing that little shallow running crankbait, he will be tough. Rick Klun, the winningest of all time, four classic titles. Multiple Angler of the Year designations. He's coming up on 30 classic qualification. Just a couple more years, no doubt, he will be there. And he's had a good year. He's getting a lot of confidence, which should be scary to the other anglers. Mm -hmm. From Clun to Kermit, that's Kermit the Frog, rolled out by Dean Rojas last year on the E50 series. And he's had a lot of success with this one. We designed the bait around the hook. The hook's already existing. The, the, Traditionally, with frog fishing, a lot of the companies make the frog, and then they figure out how to put the hook in there afterwards. Well, we did it backwards. We made it nice and lean, so it, 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 it'll walk back and forth going through the, the bushes. It's got a nice keel on the bottom down here, and it sits about like that in the water, so every time you pull it, it, it chugs. This is kind of the showcase frog right now, and, and the ones that are going into battle are sitting in my rod box all, all ready to go. So I've got some super glue and some silicone because I've had to patch them. I've had to stop fishing and, and, and patch them up and to get them to start working again because, you know, catching a seven pounder and a six pounder on them, and it just, it just, it just tears them up. Dean Rojas from the West Coast, now lives in Grand Saline, Texas, had the Purolator Big Bass on day one, and it was a big one. Seven pounds even. That one ought to hold on for the rest of the tournament, unless some big surprises come up today or tomorrow. Also landed a 514 on day two, fishing with that Kermit the Frog. Boy, he was putting that frog to work, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Of course, this was a prototype, uh, a kind of a new little creation of his, so we're going to see. It didn't catch limits, but boy, it sure caught some big fish. Rojas has made the top 12, though, with only six out of a possible limit of 10. That's a two-day five-fish limit. And Clun has just caught his second fish, Tommy. Boy, what a great start. You, you go into a hole, and, and you're a little bit unfamiliar with the surroundings. Right off the bat, you put two fish in the boat. That is a bonus, because I know that these guys have got to be thinking one fish. If I can just catch one fish out of each hole, I'll be in good shape. And here he is, plenty of time left, and he's already caught two. Again, when Clun is on, the rest of the guys need to watch out. Of Rick Clun's four classic wins, possibly the most memorable, was also gotten on the Arkansas River down in Pine Bluff, downstream. He would love to snatch another victory from the waters of the Arkansas. Did you say possibly? Probably. Probably. Boy, that was quite a deal for him. He's throwing a little Lucky Craft RC, shallow running crankbait. You can look up the bank there at the grass and riprap. The shallow crankbait water is perfect for him. Rick Clun, three fish out of hole number three. That is a tremendous start. Also fishing hole number three, Davey Hyde, also a former classic champion and also a two-time angler of the year. I did a little bit. I was fishing on the bank some and fishing offshore. I'm sure there's a lot of guys catching them both ways. Uh, the problem, you know, with hour and 10 minutes is just being able to find a, a school of fish, but all you got to find is one, and you can catch five and five casts. All of these guys have a strategy, have a philosophy for the six-hole course. Davey Hyde fishing at the western end of hole number three, his first hole of the day. And you know, last year when we were on the course, I'm going to guess that 10% of the water oh, was really productive. Boy, there, here's a nice fish. Mm -hmm. This hole for he and Clun is turning out pretty good. And yes. I'll bet this year that the, well, the same fish are on the course but they're probably in 30 or 40 percent of the water now, which means that the guys have just got to get out there and work harder to find them. Davey caught that fish in a little bit deeper water than what we've been seeing. Have a look at that ah. one. <laughs> Hands Boy. on. These fish are strong. These anglers have said it all week long. God, these fish are so strong. I ah, need to quit. There we go. <laughs> yes, baby. Got two minutes. <laughs> Woo! Good job, Davey Height. In the first period, the first hour and 20 minutes of fishing are in the books. We're ready for period two, and Gary Klein is getting ready to go into the hole he wanted to start in today. He's ready to put on a show.
Go Bassmaster Tournament Trails Elite 50 Series. There's our leaderboard with Rick Clun on top. We've actually got 12 anglers out there on our six-hole course, Lake Dardanelle on the Arkansas River. The anglers today are fishing the Illinois Bayou Arm. Two anglers to a hole, they'll fish six periods. The final period is happy hour. You're taking a look right now at Gary Klein. He wanted to start his day in hole number six, right at the takeoff, right at the way in there. He didn't get first pick, so he's going for period number two in hole number six. He's on his way there right now. Gary Klein, one of the all-time favorites, fan favorites in the world of bass fishing. Yeah, hole number six is very interesting. I bet we're going to see a lot of activity in it. And you know, here's what I think as I watch these guys fish. This event gives us a little bit of a preview of what next year might be like. This. This is kind of unlike most of the events we've had this year. It is not a spawning bass event. Next year when we fish, uh, Tommy, practically all year long, mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot of stops that will be just like this. And, I, and so I'm, I'm really interested, Gary Klein doing his business right here. I'm really interested to see how, uh, uh, under that situation, how the David Fritzes and the Mark Davises and Clun and Hype who are all good offshore, this, this is a good fish right here, who are all good offshore fishermen. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how they do next year. Whoever becomes the That's angler more. of the year next year will have survived through a lot of different techniques, and that's the kind of fishing that's going on here today. A lot of techniques. A lot of techniques. We'll be Mr. Versatile, next year's angler of the year. Yeah, yeah. look, look uh, uh, Tommy, G Gary caught a fish on a crankbait. He turns right around, picks up his spinning rod. Now he's caught one on a little finesse worm. You've got to be able to play all the notes on the oh, piano okay. today. That's that, right. that is for sure. Hey, that we, was good, Tommy. I like that. There, there, <laughs> that was good by Gary Klein. Dude, he got two fish already in short order here in hole number six. We are following Gary Klein today. Also, Rick Klein, Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iaconelli, Alton Jones, Davey Height, Dean Rojas. We don't have cameras with David Fritz or Dustin Wilkes, Terry Scroggins, Aaron Martin, Zell Rowland. We'll, we'll report the scores for you, and we'll get it all sorted out by the end of the day. We're looking for six anglers to take into that final round. Boy, that point has been so good this year already. Yeah, because this will be the, what, third or fourth fish that we've seen caught off that point. Remember, Iaconelli caught it's one there in the first day, period. Just about right there. And Randy Howell just became a hero out on that point last year. Work. So that is an awful good place. From Gary Klein, we go back further up Illinois Bayou to hole number four. That's where Davey Hyde is fishing in period number two. And who would you less like to fish behind than that guy, Rick Klun? But Davey says sometimes it's OK. Knowing his strengths and his uh, fishing personality. That's why I picked this jig up. I guarantee you he's cranking these rocks. You know, so I don't feel uncomfortable fishing around behind him or same area because I'm fishing something just totally different. Yeah, Davey Hyde is throwing a little brown quarter ounce jig that his buddy Scott Rook made for him, actually. But one thing you better watch out for. I'm sure he's thinking that yeah, baby. Rick Clun is showing his little crankbait, yeah. and he is, but he's also throwing a little finesse worm in there, so he might be duplicating a little bit. Flying colors. We done found us a dog that'll hunt. I mean, you just got to get something going, you know, that, that last little move I made in the, in the first hole and caught me a fish, and then, you know, I, I feel great. I mean, I... I'm going to catch a lemon in this deal, maybe even a big one. Davey obviously pumped with two fish. Now back to Klein. He's left the jetty there. He moves across the way to a pier, one cast, and bang. Now that yeah. is what you call positive oh, feedback. About that, he may man. be on to something right there. <laughs> well, you know what, Tommy? Hole number six is different than all the other holes out there. There's a lot of, actually, there's a lot of man-made stuff going on. That dike across the way there is man-made. It has a lot of rocks on it. Gathers up the fish. And Gary has moved over to this covered pier that he's fishing. Now, lots of tournaments go out of this dock, and they turn fish loose there at the ramp after they weigh them. The fish come out of that little pocket there, and they can either go over there to the, to the rock dike, or they can move over here to this covered pier. When they get to the pier, it is full of wooden legs going down in the water. And on each side of the pier, there are lots of rocks. There's, it's, a, it's a magnet for all the fish that are turned loose up there at the launching ramp. And they're going to come down there. That's their first place to stop. 
and they're probably going to stay there for a pretty good while. So these guys know that. And when they get to hole number six, they're either going to go to the dike or they're going to go over there and see if there isn't a new guy that has moved into the covered pier. Well, you can see some of the crowd. They're taking pictures. They are getting a really a front row seat for this fishing show being put on by Gary Klein. And man, oh man, has he gone to work there. This is going to be fish number five. This place has really paid off for Gary Klein. He's got about 10 and a half pounds now. Gary Klein at this point has easily taken over the lead in this third day, this qualifying day of fishing. Ah! Well, we know who that's an homage to right there. That would be our friend, Mr. Mike Iaconelli. And Gary, just give it a little back, you know, <laughs> giving something back to the game. <laughs> oh, Iaconelli is changing our sport, isn't he? Absolutely. Hey, it was very interesting to me that Gary was throwing his little spinning rod. We all, we all think of Gary Klein as the guy with a flipping stick and a jig, and that's all he can do. All these guys are starting to become very versatile. All right, now we're moving from period number two to period number three. Again, Klein in the lead. Our first look now at Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam incredibly has made the top 12 in every one of the six E50 so far. That is an accomplishment for a guy who, uh, you know, is known for fishing on the edge, for power fishing, for taking chances. He still winds up so consistent. I, I still think Mark Davis's feat of winning was is tops, but man, six out of six, that's pretty Take tough. And did you see him look at his clock a minute ago? How many times do these guys look at their watch during the course format opposed to the regular tournament? It's a totally different game. They get on the clock. They are very, very conscious of what is happening because they've got limited time both to find fish and to catch them. That's what makes this game different from just about any other fishing tournament you'll ever see. Kevin Van Dam now on the board, but Gary Klein with the big lead so far. When we come back, we'll hit Kermit the Frog one more time. For him, it's feast or famine. Which is it going to be today? The Elite 50 Series stop number two. We're on the Arkansas River, Lake Dardanelle. 12 anglers fishing on this semi-final day. They're trying to get down to the final six who will fish the finals on our six-hole course. They'll each fish for an hour and 20 minutes in each hole. Free-for-all happy hour at the end. This is the deck that Mike Iaconelli told us he had every, every rod he owns out on the deck today. He's going to try a little bit of everything. We'll see how that's working out. And talk about him the way you want. He dances, he screams, he's cocky, but he, he backs it up, man. He's kind of like Kevin Van Dam. He's in every cut. He wins the Pure Later Big Bass. He's everywhere, and he's got everybody screaming, Tommy. And everybody following him as well. He's always got a big crowd these days. Did I call that shot? Did I call that shot? Yeah, number two. It's the first place I've seen in this course that reminds me exactly of one of the patterns I was fishing. I mean, to a T. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up about this. I feel like if I take my time here, I'm going to catch a limit. I really feel like that. That was the first stump I cast through, the first one. I'm just going to take my time. A lot of it's looking, looking for dark spots. I'm going to really take my time in here. I'm going to stay this whole hour, 40 minutes in this bay, right here. I'm going to stay. Well, I can tell by the by a Kermit the Frog here that we're getting ready to see Dean Rojas, but I have to say one thing about Iconelli. Back in the 40s, my mom used to buy me tennis shoes and they were exactly like Iconelli's got on the day. Maybe, maybe the ones there. He may have got on a second-hand store. The Con All-Star, sweet. Dean Rojas working Kermit the Frog today. First couple of days of this tournament, he had great success with Kermit, a seven-pounder on day one. Today, not so much success. In fact, he's struggling. Oh, got it. Ugh. I just not wanting to grab a hold of it. There he is, got him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're on the board. <laughs> Woo! See what they do to my frog? They just—that's why they get beat up so bad. But then you just boink, pop them right back, and they're ready to go. Yes. See, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. We've been only throwing it for three and a half hours now.
Camera makes some people famous and some people fools, doesn't it? <laughs> Ooh, that looks interesting. Must be a white bass or something. You know those would hit this, though. That fish heard. All he wants is the real thing. Can't believe we got one here that's got brains. Wait a minute. Rick plun has got a spinning rod in his hand, Tommy. Well. <laughs> you don't see that very often, but I think it's very interesting because he knows that he needs to catch an extra fish or two on something other than a crankbait. So he's throwing his little finesse worm and he's doing a good job with it. Very self-conscious about that. He says, I'm just not very good with this stuff. And I used to be. He used to use the spinning tackle a lot. Doesn't use it so much anymore. He's fishing hole number five now. Well, I think that brings up a very interesting part about Rick Clunan. And I've noticed several things that he's doing that he doesn't normally do. A couple of techniques that he's trying. Rick Clun, hey, maybe he's the best, but doggone it, he's out there trying to get better. Good news is, though, we got something going. Alton Jones, the winner of our final Elite 50 event for 2004 there in Paducah, Kentucky. Alton Jones swimming that jig. Now, that's not too far away from throwing a spinnerbait, is it? You know what? It accomplishes the same thing. You couldn't throw a spinnerbait in that grass, though. The grass would mess up the blade. It would hang it up. So you throw that jig and virtually work it just like a spinnerbait. That's a pretty nice fish there for Alton. Actually, this grass and that technique was working very well out on the big lake during qualifying days. I'm learning a lesson. If I've got any wind tomorrow, I will not be wasting. There's a good one. I think he's a keeper. If I got any wind at all tomorrow, I will not be wasting any time out on those ledges, if it, unless he gets dead calm. OK. Let's see how that one is. I believe he's, I believe that one's going to make it, too. 16 inches. Now, see, I've got a decision to make here. I can either break dance and scream a little bit, or I can re-rig and keep fishing. Let's see. I think I'm going to re-rig and keep fishing. No offense, Mike. The Mike he's talking about, of course, is Mike Iconelli. Two keepers there for Jones. Uh, they've all got Iconelli on the brain these days, it seems like. Big one! Big one! Yeah! Yeah! Number three! I thought it was bigger than that. <laughs> Water that deep, baby. That deep. What? 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 This is the exact pattern I fished yesterday. I've caught more fish here in, in 40 minutes. I've caught all course. What this tells me is every course from here on out now, we're going to try to duplicate this pattern, which is shallow wood. So I'm going to be running to the backs of every pocket that I find the rest of the course. I'm going to just run this pattern. And, and that's it. Dude, there's just too many bites on this pattern. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Right there, that's what I'm talking about. Boy, did you see how shallow that fish was? Oh, my God. Isn't it amazing? It's like, you just you find any little piece of wood you can find, you throw to it, and there's fish on it. Like that one. Now that's a big one. God, that's another good one. God, that's a big one. Every piece of wood you get to. Oh. Uh, God, he ate it. Talking about making up ground quick. You know, you get into some holes, and you have a tendency sometimes to get a little down because you leave a hole without catching one. Did you get that? I was talking about it. Did you get that? That's so sweet. God. Let me throw a Senko at you just for the heck of it. Man, I love it. Yeah. Up to now, it hasn't so much been Mike Iaconelli's kind of day, but you can see the fire is starting to burn right now. When we come back, are we really going to let it all hang out? Are we really going to go Ike? We'll be back to Dardanelle <laughs> right after this.
At the last Sitco Bassmaster Elite 50 on Smith Lake, Mark Davis earned the nickname Mr. E50. He's won three of the six Elite 50 events. But Kevin Van Dam has earned an elite designation of his own. He is six for six in making the semifinal 12-man cut and, of course, holds the points title from the 2004 season. Van Dam's closest competitors in top 12 qualifying are Davey Height and Dean Rojas, with four appearances each. Yeah. The Bass Insider has been brought to you by Sitco. We're on the waters of the Arkansas River near Russellville. This is Lake Dardanelle, the event. The Elite 50, the top 50 anglers from the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. Four tournament series. This is event number two for 2005 here on Lake Dardanelle. There's a man who was leading on this semi-final day. 12 anglers fishing a six-hole course, trying to make it to the final six. That cut for the championship. Rick Klun was leading first thing this morning, but since then, Gary Klein got into his favorite hole. Hole number six, right there at the weigh-in, cleaned that one out. Ten and a half pounds, so Rick Klun is playing catch-up now. If memory serves me right, the last tour event that Klun won was down on Douglas Lake in Tennessee, and it had this same course format. I think he won an Open down in Rayburn a couple years ago, but that was the last tour, so the course really fits him well, he, in fact, he admitted it. He says, I read water so, so well, and that, that's such a big help here. But he also is not distracted by the, another angler in his hole. He fishes lures that kind of move him along quickly. And, and you know what? He's just steady, not slow and steady, but just steady. So I, I think he's always a threat in a course format. Well, that completed a limit for Rick Klun. That gives him the lead back again with 13 pounds. Now over to Mike Iconelli. Check the tennis shoes, Tommy. Oh, yeah, he's still got the Con All-Stars. Still looking good for Ike. He's really gotten something Look going in there. this last period. That's them. There they are right there. Those are, those are authentic. Big one. <laughs> Living on the edge. Yeah, run into the rock, baby. I did it. Keepers, five keepers, third hole. I'm, I'm stoked right now. That's a good fish, too. That's two and a half. I'm really stoked right now. I know I need a kicker still, but you know, a limit in the boat on the third hole feels good, you know what I mean? Feels real good. I, I'm telling you, I'm sweating, I'm thirsty, I'm exhausted. I feel I feel great though, man. <laughs> I'm ready to catch another fish. I think um, you know, more than catching a limit out of this hole, what this hole does for me, real important, gives me a whole lot of confidence on what to focus in on on the on the next next courses. And uh, that's that's pretty important, you know. So I'm leaving here with five fish. And I'm leaving here with a whole lot of confidence, and that's that's key. So Mike iconelli has got his limit now, but boy, nothing like days one and two. But he's got time to catch some more big fish. We've only completed three periods of play so far. We've got three plus left to go. It's time to take our Toyota hole count. And of course, period number three has been our most productive so far. And that's interesting, just past uh, midday right there. So we'll keep that in mind. The hot hole so far, well, it's been hole number six right there in front of the weigh-in, in front of the crowds. That's good for the crowds, good for us, and also good for us, the fact that Mark Davis, by far the big star of the Elite 50 Series so far, has agreed to stick around a little further. And Jerry, I know you got some more questions for us. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really still hung up on the statement you made about I've changed the way I fish. and. Mark, the way I see it, 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 it would maybe take three things to become a winner. A, a lot of ability, and you've had that all along. A lot of experience, you have that. And the third thing, I can't put my finger on it, but, but there's some mystery there in number three. Talk to me about that. You know, I think part of it is, of course, uh, confidence. That goes without saying. And a lot of it is, um, gosh, it's, it's, it's hard to put into words, but it's, uh, it's a mindset. There's, a, there's that comfort zone there. That, you know, for years and years, we've tried to strive go. to make the classic every year. And you get into that, well, I know I can catch 10 pounds if I go do this. If I do this all the way, I'll catch 10 pounds. I'm not going to win, but I'll catch 10 pounds. And 10 pounds are going to be pretty good. And, and you get comfortable in that zone. And when you're in that mentality, you're not going to win. So you have to get out, out of that in order to win. 
Mark, we really appreciate We First of all, appreciate your time here today, but we really do appreciate you amongst the bass fishing world. I appreciate you guys, Gary. Well, back to our course where period three was fantastic. A lot of anglers catching fish, a lot of them making their move during period three. This is a shot from period number four and about the only action in period four. Kevin Van Dam with that fish right there. No catches, in fact, in period number five from the anglers we are covering today. There's your leaderboard. Rick Klun with the lead at 13 pounds, being pursued by Klein. Mike Iconelli in the mix as well. You gotta make it into the top six or you're gonna hit the road. You won't make it to the finals. There's a man who has not cracked the top six yet today. In the back of the course, hole number five, period six. Kevin Van Dam and crunch time for him. And Tommy, it is so great to be over there talking to Mark Davis about Wasn't that all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's just the greatest. But and it's kind of unusual to not see his name on that leaderboard. But uh, you, you know, not only are these guys fighting for that sixth spot right now, and that will help Kevin. Boy, did he need that. Height, Zell Rowland, Gary Klein, David Fritz. Those guys are all in this today, and they have not qualified for the classic yet. So. That's big. With that catch, Kevin Van Dam cracks into the top six. Can he hang on? And when we come back, maybe the most electrifying 20 minutes you ever saw in a bass fishing tournament. But now the crowds are starting to gather for the weigh-in. That's later. We go to Keith Allen back at Dardanelle State Park. Oh, my, my, the scene is up, scene. Lake Dardanelle State Park in Russellville, Arkansas. The E50 is going off, and this crowd is ready to see this weigh-in to go down and see who the Super Six will be. The Bush heavyweights are still up in the mix, but so far nobody has bumped out Kevin Van Dam, who sits on the bubble with 20 pounds and two ounces. These folks are ready to have a party. Lake Dardanelle, Russellville, Arkansas, Elite 50 stop number two. This is semi-final day. we got 12 anglers out there fishing, trying to make one of the top six spots. Those are the six anglers who will go on and fish the championship on the final day. David Fritz hanging on to that sixth place spot right now, but there is some more fishing left here in the sixth period of the day. They do have one happy hour after the sixth regulation period. Going over to hole number two and Davey Hyde. It's been a dry spell for him since the second period today. He's looking a little bit down in the dumps. He hasn't, Brown caught, a, a, <laughs> turned hasn't caught a keeper in three periods. Only has five pounds. Yesterday was his 40th birthday. If he doesn't make the cut, he will be a very unhappy birthday boy. Mm. And you can see the grass out there in front of him. Well, Davey's not actually fishing that grass like everybody else. He's he's right, oh, he's probably in six or eight feet of water on the, on a nice little drop off in front of that grass. And he's as close to fishing the river channel as anybody I've seen all day long, actually. Woo, baby! That's a beautiful. I need Big mama <laughs> hit my bait, man. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, my gosh. This is a big one. Again. Getting well in a hurry. Oh, baby. Ah. How do I want to Are there mood swings in bass oh. fishing? I think there are. Davey there. Hyde with the big frown two fish ago. That's his fifth fish right there. Happy birthday, Davey Hyde. This has all taken place in minutes. I'm not kidding you. A, a man's career is being turned around here. And, you know, like I told you before, Davey Damn. is really close to that river channel. He's not fishing in the channel, but he's not fishing up in that grass. He's right in the middle of the grass to the channel. And I thought that was great. Davey fished a little different than everybody else all day long, actually. And if we can look at that point there, and the train has gone by and it's out of its way, you can see that there is a drop-off you know, like a half a cast away from that grass. 
And when you get in that area, that seemed to be where at least this one school of fish were just kind of suspended and hanging. And he gets throwing that little Scott Rook brown jig. And boy, did he hit the jackpot. Oh my gosh! Back up, back up. I don't think I'm gonna measure that. Man. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> you like drama with your fishing oh tournaments? Oh my Dave gosh! Dye has provided us with a ton of it in the last 20 minutes of fishing here. Incredible stuff. Davey Hyde obviously with the lead going back to the weigh-in. The real story is now we are the top six who are going to fish on yes. championship day. The crowd is gathering. We're about to weigh them in, and we're going to find out. Don't go away. The oh, Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Berkeley Fireline. Curator. Motor Guide and Anheuser-Busch. Day three of the Elite 50 stop number two began with 12 competitors shooting for six spots in the finals. The course was the Illinois Bayou tributary of Lake Dardanelle, divided into six holes or sections. Two anglers to a section, fishing for about an hour and a quarter, plus a fish anywhere happy hour at the end of the yes. day. <laughs> Everyone started oh, from zero, even the big performer from the first two rounds, Mike Iaconelli. <laughs> Day three was harder for him. No big fish, some minor celebrations, and all in all, just happy to get a limit. I did it. The number two qualifier had it even tougher. Kevin Van Dam needed a miracle to make the top six after a very disappointing day. No! Gary Klein made it look easy. Rick Klein had gotten his good limit, as had Sitco Angler of the Year Aaron Martins. And Davey Hyde had figured things out in the last two hours, yeah. turning a disappointing day into a monster finish. Del Rowland and Dean Rojas knew that it was not going to happen for them. Next up was Rick Klun, who said before that he favors this format. It, it, it's one man's skill against another. There's no hidden water. There's no secret hose. You know, somebody doesn't run 100 miles and find a spot that nobody, nobody else knows about. And it's just your ability to locate fish is really showcased here. He also said he needed 12 pounds a day to make it to the finals. Take the lead, have about 13 pounds and five ounces, and Rick Clun moves to the top of the leaderboard. Clun takes the lead, but he won't hold it for long. The thing about tournament fishing, you know, if it's an eight-hour event, you got to give it 100% all eight hours. You never know when you might have opportunity to, to bust a big bag. And, you know, I had that late in the day. And, was able to capitalize on it, so. Grab a couple of them big and hold them up. Davey Height has got the goods. 19 pounds, one ounce, including the five pounder. Well, you know, I did a lot of different things and I finally got on, you know, I, I had a good start early and then it went dead for a little while. And then I, you know, I, I figured a little something out and um, I just had a great day. I can't wait for tomorrow. He's pretty sure he'll have the lead going into the final round. Now he waits to see by how much. 11 pounds, eight ounces. Aaron Martins thinks about the missed ones, but hits the stage with 11 plus. He'll make it. Terry Scroggins falls short. But Dustin Wilkes has 10-15. He's got a shot at it, but it will be close. Alton Jones bids his farewell. And then it's David Fritz with nine pounds, three ounces. He doesn't think that will do it, but he's gonna wait and see. Gary Klein finished up his day in hole six and put on a clinic for the fans. With his 12-4, he's solid for the finals, right behind Height and Klein. If I make it, it's gonna be by the skin of my teeth, and I'll have to adjust tomorrow to have a shot at winning. So, uh, you know, if I make it, we're just gonna go gamble tomorrow. So with Fritz, the bubble man at 9-3, Mike Iaconelli takes the stage and hopes the limit will get him there. Ten pounds, five ounces. It does. Take the number six spot. Ike, 
Dustin Wilkes, Aaron Martins, Gary Klein, Rick Klun, and Davey Hyde. Three classic champs, four anglers of the year in the mix. Safe to say, the talent is there and ready to go for the finals. Hey, we're all ready for that final day, although I don't know if they're going to be able to top day three. That was terrific. And this is unofficial, but that could have been the top 15 minutes ever in bass history that really? Davey Hyde pulled It's off. in the top 10, that is for sure. And of course, that is going to be our sit-go turning point. Davey Hyde, sixth and final regulation period. He's got two fish, and then he gets on them, gets a big fish as well. A great monster finish to a great day for and Davey Hyde. And that happened in hole number two. However, hole number six was your hot hole of the day. There was eight fish caught in hole number six. In the best period, this will surprise you, period number three. That's 1240 <laughs> to 150. So much for going early and staying late, Tommy. No one will ever get up early to go fish again, <laughs> although some will. I, I, I predict that. Okay, there are guys trying to qualify for the Sitco Bassmaster Classic from the Elite 50. The top 10 in E50 point standings get in. As we look at that list, though, we see certain names. Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iaconelli, Worth, Clun, and Scroggins. These are anglers who have already qualified through the top 25 in tour points. So that's going to open up five tour point spaces. Of course, that means that Mike Worm, who's at number 32, is now technically qualified for the Classic. But there's a lot of fishing left. And I predict that you and I will be sitting up there at the railroad bridge waiting for Davey Hyde on that final day. Can he bring this one home? It's going to be fun to see. Uh, you know what? He has never lost the lead in a tournament once he grabbed hold. All right, he has the big fish back here, though. He caught that one big fish. Take that away, and they're all equal again. We'll see what happens next time on the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Ah! Ah! This has been a presentation of ESPN, the yes! worldwide <laughs> leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com. I need Big Mama.